All right, so here we go. Continuing our series on stainless steels. This video is focused on the most commercially popular austenitic types or grades. So in this video, we will discuss 303 or 303S, 303 SE, 304, 304L, 316, 317, and 317L. From our introduction to stainless steels video, you know that chrome is primarily what makes these stainless steels stainless. So in other words, chrome is what forms the oxide layer on the steel and makes it stainless and corrosion resistant. Now, other elements also affect the properties of their standard commercial alloys. And well, what are those elements, Michael? Oh, I am so glad you asked. In addition to answering that, there's a little more terminology along with the elemental descriptions that apply here. When you see a suffix of L, it indicates low carbon, not to be confused with the alloy steel designation of 11L17 or 11L37, both of those L's mean lead. In our discussion here of stainless steel, the L means low carbon. Low carbon, L. A suffix of F indicates a free machining. And S indicates sulfur is added, or SE, for selenium. Whenever we mention a percentage, we mention a percent by weight. So an 18% chrome alloy, there would be 18 pounds of chrome in 100 pounds of metal. And when chrome is added to, to iron, it tends to stabilize a ferritic structure. Molybdenum is also a ferrite stabilizing element. Nickel and manganese act to stabilize an austenitic structure and are present in all various proportions in all the austenitics. Other elements present promote either austenite or ferrite in the metallurgical structure. And in this case, the balance of the chemical composition assures the austenitic structure is that is what we are discussing. In this family of standard grades, type 304 is the most popular of the 188 grades. Now, do you remember what 188 stands for? In this case, I'll tell you. 18% nominal carbon content and 8% nominal nickel content. And the general corrosion performance is very good. The low carbon 304 or the 304 L grade is recommended for applications involving welding or heat cycles above 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Type 303, or sometimes shown as 303S, has a 15% minimum sulfur added, which aids in the ma machining characteristics, but with some loss of corrosion performance. 303SE substitutes selenium for the sulfur to achieve the improved machining with less impact on some other properties, but is much less commonly used and much more costly. Now, in case you ever need to buy any 303 SE, I know a guy. Hmm? It's me. Anyway, type 316 has 2 to 3% molybdenum, which raises the corrosion performance, particularly in chloride environments. Nickel content is increased to keep the austenitic structure. And 317 has yet even higher chromium nickel and a three to 4% molybdenum for another step higher in corrosion performance. 317L are suited for welding applications more so than the straight grade 317. Additional alloy grades exist for specialized applications. In general, higher chromium and nickel for higher temperature applications. Nitrogen strength in alloys in the 200 series or in the nitronic grades can be sought after in later videos. Uh, and if you have any questions about the 200 or nitronic grade series, uh, please just comment below and we'd be happy to get them answered. A word of caution here about specifications though. Basic grade definitions are frequently modified by restricting chemistry further and by adding requirements and testing to verify conformance to that specification. So the grade or type is only the beginning of the requirements that may apply to a metal if you're interested in buying a metal, you gotta be aware of those specifications. If you have any questions about that, Michelin can help. Hope you enjoyed this video and make sure to subscribe. And don't forget to check out all the previous videos as well. Thank you and stay tuned. This is Michael with Michelin Metals.